in view of the historic conquest by some Muslim countries like Turkey of some parts of Europe. Some Muslim countries like uh, the <coughs> dynasty, Abdul Rahman's dynasty, which conquered a part of Europe in Spain long ago. Now these memories of this are so horrifying for them. And also the fear of the spread of the message of Islam against Christian and Christianity. There is just that, not a love for Christianity. It's a, a you know, a, a jealous guarding of their civilization, whether crooked or right or wrong, it is immaterial. Their superiority over the rest of the world must be guarded at every cost. And the only challenge which can arise can arise from Islam and from nowhere else. Add to this the stupidity, suicidal policies of the Muslim countries who help them further damage the image of Islam and blemishing it with their own ugliness in the, their minds. And then the picture is complete. It is this against which Ahmadis are to wage a jihad, a real holy jihad of sacrifices, a jihad not to be fought with weapons, but with superior wisdom. We must understand their ways and means, and we must counter them, and must, we must win with the same weapons as they imply, employ, but more wisely and more dexterously employed in, the, in defense of Islam. This is the message which I deliver to you, Khudam, and this is the message you must pass on to all MD youth. Okay? This is exactly what my question was leading up to, exactly how uh, uh, the Ahmadiyya Jamaat is the actually The analysis has taken the... me so long. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if I develop the question further as you led me to, then instead of having a late dinner, we'll have an early <laughs> sari. <laughs> You know, you have to go to fasting for tomorrow. If, no? I, if I just mention one thing, you don't have to uh, answer Please. elaborately. But I have spoken on this subject so many ways, in so many times, at so many times, in so many ways. You know that. You should know, I mean. Any other question, please? At last. <laughs> but not the last, perhaps. No. No. The whole line is that of those who want to ask questions? No. This way, and then that way? And then that. And that that way. <laughs> what is the time? I think we'll have to hold another question and answer session. You see, supplementary one later on. Okay. Whenever you, I'm, I'm, I'm available. It's up to you. Because if we sit with them, because you know, sometimes I could do away with a question summarily dispose of it freely, you know, shortly and brief. But the issue raised is so important in my eyes that although I have spoken on that so many times, I still feel you must be educated on these things more thoroughly and must be reminded of these things more often than before. Because they are vital issues, some of them which have been raised here. So don't think I'm taking longer time unnecessarily. I could have disposed with the question in a few sentences if I like, like sometimes I do to this gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> with due, due apologies, of course. But that is because, not because I belittle him in any way. It's out of a love we have developed between us and him. You know, he has become so familiar to the institution of question answers that we, without him, there is no joy left. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, I play with him and have a little joke, <coughs> but only out of love and uh, like you have some, sometimes play with your children and the children play with your elders. So don't mind it if I yeah. say that. Yes, sir. Do you mind it? No. Good. Jazakumullah. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Hazur, this question was asked by me in Washington, but... Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs>
But I think that the question was not read the whole through, and Khazur has un answered a part partial, partial truth. Yes. So I, I, I repeat the uh, same question. Again. All over again? <laughs> yes, sir. Only read that part yes. which you think has yes. not yet been dealt with. Yes. And don't repeat the whole question. Yes, sir. Because it runs into two pages, I suppose. <laughs> The question does, I mean. Uh, I repeat the, the, Only that the part. Only the remaining part. Yes. What Hazur we should do if we say Zohar and Asar prayer, although uh, we know that the Imam must have recited Surat Fatiha, but do not know what Surah of the Quran is he reciting. What should now, we, I understand. What should and we do? Do you mean... Should everyone who joins the prayer first go to the imam and ask, breathe into his ear, please tell me what was the surah which you recited? Do it very quietly and respectfully, of course, I know, without disturbing the other, prayer, other worshippers, and then come back and occupy his place. And yet another one comes and goes to the imam first. I think that is why it was suggested to me that a door should be opened in the front of the mosque. <laughs> Did this suggestion originate from you? <laughs> so what, what should we do now? <laughs> <laughs> you should decide whatever you think of. Right. Okay? Yes. <laughs> it's as, as easy as that, you know. I could have said that. So there are two ways of answering a question, a short one and a long one. Uh, but I wanted, I did not want him to dishearten him, so I took the longer route. All right. Okay. N uh, another question. Yes, please. Yes. Yes. During Zohar and Asar prayers, when the Imam is, is a, trans, a traveler, he says two rakats. Right. And mutki uh, and... Uh, uh, the one who follows him. Yes, follows him. Yes. Uh, says four rakas. Right. That is two rakas after the Imam has said the salam. Correct. And the uh, muktadi. Uh, muktadi. Right. Uh, in order to complete his or her prayer, says additional two rakas. Right. But when the Imam is a local man, the muktadi says four rakas right. after Imam. Even if he is a, he's well, on journey. Yes. Yes, that's right. So, Hazur, some, uh, throw some light on the subject and tell us the hikmat behind it, behind this. Now, do you suggest that uh, if somebody is on journey and he's saying his prayer behind a local imam, after two rakats, you say, Salaamu Alaikum. <laughs> no. Is that what you suggest? No. What are you suggesting then? No, the, he should say the four cards. So then there's no problem. <laughs> no question left. <laughs> the, what is the hikmat? <laughs> when the imam, imam... Hikmat is obvious. The absurdity of everyone saying two rakat behind an imam and <laughs> going his own several path. That is the disorderly situation and laughable situation and absurd situation which is avoided. And you must remember that Imam is to follow, is to be followed. Yes. If Imam makes a mistake, the muqtadi has to commit the same mistake knowing that the Imam is making a mistake. Yes. So but if, if the Imam, imam is says four rakat, the muqtadi must say the four rakat. Yes. Okay? Yes. The hikmat should be asked regarding Imam saying two rakat yes. and the muqtadi saying four rakat. Yes. So you put your question in the wrong place. Yes, first that of is all, my, that is my I understand. I'm, I'm correcting your perspective first. Yes, sir. The question should not have been in relation to the Imam saying two rakat, that four rakat, and a man on journey saying the four rakat. That is all right. There's no problem. It's absolutely yes. all right. Yes. Now the question is, the Imam is saying two rakat. Yes. The, what is first? What is obligatory? for those who are not on journey, is four rakat. Yes. Right? Yes. So, the obligatory, obligatory cannot be sacrificed for the sake of optional. 